Hey guys, back at you here. Uh, today, going over athletic performance and sleep. For those of you that are not athletes in your own mind, if you work out, you're an athlete. If you do anything active like that, right, you're doing something athletic, all right? You don't have to be a professional athlete getting paid to do it. For those of you that have children that are doing sports, listen up, it's gonna be good today, okay? So, that book that I've been going over with you all, Why We Sleep, okay, by Matthew Walker, he did a lot of research into athletic performance and what role sleep plays in that. It's huge. I kind of want to tell you how he got into it. It's interesting. He said this was kind of the beginning of his, of his infancy stages of getting into the sleep stuff. And after one of his presentations, a guy walked up to him and said, you know, great speech, great talk. He said, you know, it's really interesting. I'm a pianist. And he said, I can be practicing late into the night on a piece and I just, I'll stumble through it. And it's the same part every time where I get, you know, I get to and I can't get through it. He goes, I'll go to bed and get a good night's sleep and I'll wake up the next day and I can just play it beautifully. And he was saying how his jaw just dropped. He said it was probably the most significant scientific conversation he'd ever had with someone that didn't even know that they were having it with him. That turned him on to athletic performance or performance of any kind and sleep. What do we do? What he found is that practice does not make perfect. Practice with sleep makes perfection, makes perfect. So what they were doing in order to um, exercise this and test it out was they took a study of right-handed people and they had them learn a sequence on a keyboard of like five numbers. So if you were doing four, one, two, three, four, okay? And they had to type it over and over. They had them do this for 12 minutes with little breaks. And then they had them recall that, okay? And so they were finding that these people had difficulties and everybody was different. Maybe mine would have been I had a, a difficulty between the four, one, three. Their brain was breaking it up into little sections that they could remember, but they had the same difficulties every time they would go to type it. Group one, they had them learn this sequence in the morning, go throughout their day and retest them right before bed or in the evening. It was a 12-hour span. And then they had the other group learn it in the e later evening, go to bed for eight hours, get up in the morning and recall it. 20% of that second group that had the night sleep in between, so 20% accurate, better speed recall, and 35% more accuracy of the actual string of five numbers. Those are pretty significant findings, right? That only sleep alone caused them to have a way more accelerated performance on something they just learned. They took that first group that they had them learn it in the morning and the evening and retest them in the evening, had them sleep, and the numbers were the same. They, they boosted them up 20% on speed and 35% on accuracy. What they found, offline learning, when you're not practicing a skill, occurs exclusively through sleep. So for, for athletic findings, what this really, really taught them was that after you sleep, so let's just say you're learning a new skill, whether you're an athlete a pianist, whatever it might be, you're learning a new skill, all right? You go to sleep, that is when your body takes that motor skill and creates the pattern that's it's gonna get rid of any of the problems we're having with it. So like for the pianist, if he was struggling through a piece, right, they find where that difficulty was and the brain corrects it. Like it does that without you even knowing. It goes into the unconscious makes it a second nature motor pattern. You're not, you're not bringing it to long-term memory. It's different than when you're doing like, okay, I've, I've learned something, textbook memory, it goes into my short-term and then my long-term. What this motor skill does is it takes it into the brain and puts it somewhere in the unconscious and becomes a second nature skill that you learn. So think about everything that you're doing, whether it's riding a bike when you're a kid, right? We don't, we don't teach our kids to ride a bike by handing them a book and saying, read it. We teach them, right, they, if hopefully, right, go to sleep and they learn and that motor pattern becomes something that they do. So, what was really cool for me when I read this was that sleep alone will identify where your troubles are at. So, if you're having a trouble with that, with that keyboard sequence, it identified that and fixed it while you slept. You no longer had that delay or that transitional, you know, disruption 
the sleep fixed it and it became a pattern that you just, you had learned. Um, and this all happens, they found out, in stage two non-REM sleep. So what does that mean? When you're looking at a night of sleep, let's just say you get eight hours of sleep, the last two hours are that non-REM stage two sleep is where they call them uh, spindle fibers or spindles, brain spindles, basically pour over the brain. And they found by hooking these people up to electrodes and then doing like scans on them, any part of your brain that had been taxed to really learn something the day before, there were much more spindle fibers pouring over that area. So if you had learned a new motor skill, they found that the, the brain spindles were really rich and condensed over your motor cortex in the front of your brain to help you, right, saturate the brain there and learn that skill. Really cool findings on that. So those last two hours, guys, are the ones we all cut short. Those are the ones where like, you know what, I'm just gonna get up early and go do X, Y, Z. I'm gonna get up early to get my day going and get ahead of everybody else. Those are the most important two hours of sleep if you're trying to learn anything new. We're talking work, we're talking motor skills. This applies for everything that the brain intakes from the previous day. So guys, competitive advantage if you are an athlete listening to me on this. When you're looking for any athletic advantage, the freest advice you can get, the freest thing you can do is to not go buy more expensive equipment and shoes and bikes and whatever it might be. It is to just sleep more. That is the difference in podium or not. Uh, one of the cool things that he had researched was Usain Bolt. You guys all know who Usain Bolt is. Is he is he's known to be taking naps right before some of the best world record breaking performances he's ever had because those little sleep methods or those little sleeps that he does, those, re they, I was telling you how the, the motor skills become finite in that area, right? Anything new that he's been working on, anything that he is already phenomenal at, just get, you know, compounded in those sleep phases. That's why he takes those naps. So I, we can't argue with his performance. All right, so less than eight hours of sleep athletes, especially less than six, your time to physical exhaustion drops by 10 to 30 percent, meaning you're going to be physically fatigued faster than your counterpart, the person in the lane next to you, right? 10 to 30 percent faster, right? And your aerobic output significantly reduced. Lactic acid builds up more. Your ability for your body to cool off. For those of you that live in hot climates, this is particularly important, but all athletes, your ability to self-cool drastically decreases and you reduce the amount of blood oxygen saturation, which is needed for oxygen to compete in anything that's active. All right, so a little bit more about this. As most athletes, and especially for you parents that you know have children competing, injury is one of your biggest concerns, right? No one wants to get injured and be out of anything, but especially athletes, you don't, you don't want that injury there to, to happen if you can avoid it. Chronic lack of sleep, less than eight hours of night, massively higher injury risk. Really cool, um, he studied a lot with professional basketball players, and one of the things that they found was it's sleep before a game, absolutely. It's your post-performance sleep that really sets you in motion to see where your athletic performance can go from there. So let's just say you have a big game, big event. It is the sleep after that that is the most critical. Right? Your physical recovery from inflammation stimulates muscle repair, restocks your glucose and glycogen stores. So it's, it's so important to get sleep after you traumatize the body in any athletic thing that you do, even if it's just a practice session or a hard training session. Sleep post-traumatizing like that, the body that way, is where you're going to see the most beneficial gains. All right, so one thing I told you was working with NBA basketball players, he worked with a guy um, on the Golden State Warriors team, and these were just some basic findings. So, more than eight hours of sleep, get a load of these. So, 12% more minutes played because he wasn't as tired. 29% more points scored per minute played. That's huge, that's huge. Obviously ask a basketball player how huge that is. 2% more three-pointers nine per made, 9% 9 more free throws made, 37% less turnovers, 45% less fouls, all right? Right there, you're talking about someone who 
as a pro athlete, right? That's that's the difference between being somebody that's riding the bench and someone that's in, you know endorsed by every major endorsement you could possibly imagine. So he found that he's going and talking to sports teams now and saying, hey, you know, you're investing all these money in these people, just give them the sleep, right? That's that's where their athletic ability can thrive. So again, guys, I'll post some of this in the comments. Feel free to ask me questions. I love, love, love questions on this. If you have anything, if I don't know it, I will research it and get back to you. Give me a thumbs up if you, if you know, you want to keep hearing some more about this, if you want any more on athletics endeavors and stuff like that. But especially parents, one thing that he does say is, you know, kids, I know nowadays sports go late into the evening, even on a school night, and then we get the kids up early. A lot of coaches want you to practice late at night, get up early and go in for morning stuff, morning drills, morning whatever it might be. Those are the most critical hours of that sleep where you learn the sport activity that you are trying to do or master it, right? Not necessarily just learning a new skill with it, but mastering what you already know. Don't cut that short. They need it. The kids need it. We all need it. Even if you're just coming in to lift, you know, do strength training or Pilates here with us at Avenue. Getting that sleep in there so that you can come in and master the movements we're trying to have you to do. You can only see better gains in weight loss, feeling better, muscle tone, whatever you're looking for. All right, guys, have a great Thursday, and I'll talk with you next week.